Welcome back everyone, I'm Nick. In this video, we are talking about the state property wrapper. And this is one of the most important and most powerful uh, aspects in SwiftUI. So in our code, we can give a variable the state property wrapper. And when we do that, we are basically telling the view to watch the state of this variable. Because if this variable changes, we might have to change and update the view. So a very simple example would be if we had like a background color on our screen and while that screen was open, we wanted the background color to change. Well, what we would do is give that color a state property wrapper so that when we change that variable, the view knows that we need to also update that background color that's on the screen. So as you can imagine, these state property wrappers are used all of the time in Swift UI and we're going to actually use them in almost all of the videos going forward in this course. So it is very, very important to understand the state of things. Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're talking about states. Let's create a new file just for this video. Right click the navigator, create a new file. It's going to be a Swift UI view and let's call this state bootcamp. Let's make sure to not put any special characters in the title name. So do not do at state here, just do state bootcamp. Go ahead and click create. Once you're inside, click resume on that canvas and let's get started. I'm gonna start by setting up our screen here. So this is all gonna be stuff that we've done in previous videos. Let's start with a Z stack, open the brackets. Let's add a background layer. So I'll add a little comment here that this is the background. We're gonna do color dot uh, red and we'll do edges ignoring safe area all so that the background goes to the edges of the screen then let's add a V stack let's do spacing of 20 maybe open the brackets in this V stack let's add a couple things so this is going to be our content layer or the foreground layer whatever you want to call it first let's add a title so we'll do text uh, title then let's add a another text and this one will say count with a colon and we'll do the number one and then let's add within this v stack let's add a h stack let's add spacing to this h stack of 20 as well and we'll open the brackets and within this h stack let's add two buttons so we'll do button this is what we learned in the last video. So we use the title string protocol approach because it's easier. So for the title of this first button, let's just add quotes and we'll type in button one. In the action, let's leave it blank for now. And let's add one more. Let's do button. Let's find the string protocol completion. Let's do button two. And in this action, let's leave it blank for again for now. And now I want to format all of this. So I want these, I want this title to be bigger. So let's do dot font dot title. Let's put the count. Let's give it a font of headline and maybe an underline. So we'll do dot underline. And I want both of these to be white and I want these buttons to be white as well. So since they're all in the same stack, Instead of putting dot foreground color white on the title and on this count, I'm just going to go to the bottom of the V stack, so the whole stack, and then we can just add dot foreground color dot white. So all of the objects inside that stack, which includes the other stack and the buttons, are going to have a foreground color of white. So we got all of our white objects here. I'm going to zoom out a little so you guys can see more of the code. And now we're gonna get into states. So let's start by extracting this color dot red. Let's create a let's create a variable outside of the body to hold this color. So let's do let background color of type color equals, and let's do color dot green for now. And we're gonna copy this background color and paste it here. So instead of putting a color directly in the code, we're now referencing this variable. So when I click resume, we'll see that, that we have that green background. And now when we click these buttons, we want to be able to change the background color. So typically if you learn Swift, if you know UI kit, you can just add var. And var 
stands for variable, and it lets the system know that this variable might change. So when we had let, that basically means that this variable is going to be set for green and it's never going to change. When we add var, the system knows this can change. And that's fine in Swift, but in Swift UI, we also need to make sure that the view knows that this will change. So to do that, we use a property wrapper that's called state. So we'll do at state var. And this at state var looks a little funky, but all it's doing is telling the view to watch the state of this variable, which is the background color, because it might change. And if the state of the variable does change, we might have to update the view. So by adding the state, the view is now always going to watch this background color. So if this background color changes wherever it's referenced, it will also change in the view. So it's actually pretty simple and let's start changing the background color. So button one, let's do background color equals dot red. And for button two, let's do background color equals dot purple. Let's click resume on the canvas. Let's click play on the live preview. Right now we have the green background. When I click button one, we have a red background. When I click button two, we have a purple background. And state can be applied to pretty much any type of variable that we have here. So let's extract the title as well. So let's do at state var, uh, my title of type string equals uh, my title. And this my title we will reference in this text. And now we can change the my title. So in our button, let's do my title equals uh, button one was pressed. And in our second button, we will do my title equals button two was pressed. Let's hit resume on the canvas. And now our view is watching the state of the background as well as the state of the title. When we click button one, we have red background and it says button one was pressed. Click button two, purple background, button two was pressed. Let's do it one more time. Let's do at state var uh, count of type int. It's going to be an integer and we'll set it equal to zero. So now this count will reference within this text. So where we have the number one, I'm going to reference the variable. And remember to reference a variable within a string because we're within the quotes here. All we need to do is the forward slash, open and close parentheses, and we will put the variable inside. So we'll put count in here. And when we click the, the button, let's add one to the count. So let's do count equals count plus one. So if the count is zero, it's going to be zero plus one, so it's gonna be one. And if the count is 50, it's going to be 50 plus one, so it'll be 51. Now there's a shorter way to write this in Swift UI. Instead of count equals count plus one, we can just do count plus equals one. And that is the exact same thing, just a shorthand version, so it adds one to the count every time. And for button two, we're gonna do the exact opposite. We're gonna do count minus equals one. So every time we click the, the button two, it's gonna subtract one from our count. Let's hit resume and let's click button one and the count went up to one and I'm gonna click button one a whole bunch of times now. We can see the count keeps going up. The count's going up because we're changing this variable and our view knows to watch the state of this variable and update the view when the variable changes. So we can go up and now we'll do button two. We got our purple background, button two was pressed and we can start going down in the count. So that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to jump into what these state variables were uh, and we can change the state for any of the variables. If we wanted to extract this title and change the, the font size, if we wanted to change uh, maybe how much spacing was in this H stack, if we wanted to change the title of these buttons or maybe the color of the buttons, we could change any of these variables by just extracting the variable, extracting the color here from the code, 
to a variable outside the code and we'll give it that state property wrapper so the view knows that it might change. So if you're at home just learning this, I recommend go create a view, create, create a couple views and just try to update with simple states, try to update your view. Ch change the colors, change the fonts, change the widths, change the uh, numbers, whatever you wanna do. Just get comfortable using these states because they're gonna be super powerful, super important as we move forward. So that was it for this video. I think this was one of the easier ones, although it was also one of the most important ones. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you learned something, if you are enjoying this course. And as always, I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.